Hello, it's John Heaton, and today I'm going to talk about live albums and how, for the most part, I don't think um, they always tend to disappoint for me compared to the studio albums. I've always been more of a studio person. Um, there are exceptions, and at the end of this video, I'm going to show you seven albums where, where I think uh, the, the live versions equal or surpass the studio versions. But on the whole, you know, with all the tricks you can get up to in the studio with orchestras and overdubs and all the rest of it and great production. I think it's very rare for a band to um, surpass themselves live. And as I say, there are examples of that. But um, for, for before I go through the where I think it, it is successful, I'm just going to list, <laughs> it's quite a long list of live albums which I've been disappointed with over the years. And then I'll show you ones which I think, well, I'm not going to show you any record covers because everything is in boxes in my house, but um, ready for the house to be painted. But um, that, I'll sh highlight a few albums where I thought they were okay, and then I thought there were, some were pretty good, and then a whole lot of albums which I haven't checked out because in the late, in the sort of mid to late 70s going into the early 80s, seemed to be sort of compulsory for bands an artist to put out double live albums. It's a stag there's a staggering amount of double live albums put out by m almost everyone. And in almost all cases of the ones I've listened to, uh, they've left something to be desired. But anyway, so I'm going to start off with the disappointing ones, not in any particular order. Um, I'm not sure, this wasn't really an album, but ELO, there was a live version of Out of the Blue live at Wembley. I remember Tony Curtis introduced it. I think it was only available on video, but I remember being very disappointed with the sound quality of that compared to the record. You know, it's missing the uh, the great orchestral arrangements uh, of the record and all the Jeff Lynn studio wizardry. And I found the live album or the live video rather listless and uh, not d devoid of most of the magic of the album, which was quite sad because it is a big favorite of mine. Um, just want to mention the album Self Portrait from Bob Dylan because that contained a couple of live tracks from Isle of Wight which were totally out of place on the album and also were just totally inferior to the studio versions. There's a live version of Like a Rolling Stone, for example, and a live version of, I think it was She Belongs to Me, uh, which pretty subpar. Um, going back a bit, uh, the Beatles' Hollywood Bowl, when it first came out, it was just way too much screaming from the fans and you couldn't really hear the music. The recent Ron Howard sort of remix to go with the film is a lot more listenable, but it's still not an album I turn to uh, very often. Um, Traffic, uh, Steve Winwood's band, they came up with a li double live album in 73 called On The Road. Uh, I think the versions pale in into comparison by comparison to the uh, studio versions and also they have a tendency to kind of get into these extended jams, which they did on the record as well, but um, even more so live and it just gets a bit um, hard to listen to. Uh, Dire Straits Alchemy, I, I have this album on DVD, but I can't say I've watched it very often at all. Um, just if I reach for a Dire Straits album, it tends to be the uh, the studio albums, um, just just because I think they they work better in the studio. But there is one live album which I'll mention later on, which is pretty good from them. Um, Stevie Wonder, there was an album called Natural Wonder. I think I've only got it on CD. It's a double album of live stuff. Sort of uh, missing the magic of the studio, we have to say. I'm sorry if this is getting repetitive. David Bowie, there's got a couple of albums of his, David Live and Stage. Uh, you know, you put them alongside Low and um, Diamond Dogs, Young Americans. The stuff that the album was from is, and it's, it's not on the same level in my opinion. Now the Stones, uh, there's a couple of ones I'm going to mention in the disappointing category. Um, in particular, 1981 tour, Still Life, was issued on an album, Still Life. I think it was maybe came out in 82. Uh, just really ropey and uh, rough around the edges and 
uh, I always preferred the Stones in the studio. Love You Live was a slightly better double set from 77. Um, but, uh, you know, give me Sticky Fingers or Goats and Soup or Black and Blue any day versus the live stuff. Fleetwood Mac Live, which came out in 1980, for the most part is was a huge disappointment. There's way too much sort of extended jamming and uh, Lindsay Buckingham screaming. And <laughs> there's a couple of songs which are nice, like Fireflies. And um, but, you know, in almost all cases, uh, the, the live version pales um, compared to the studio version. But that's just me, perhaps. Buddha Khan from Dylan, when it first came out, I remember thinking, or oh, when I first had it, I was disappointed. The recent reissue has made me reappraise that, but uh, that was never a favourite of mine back in the day. Um, and then to mention the ex Beatles, well, Ringo, I, I don't think I listened to any of his live albums. They're all pretty terrible compared to the, the versions from the, from the albums, whether solo or Beatles, which, which they were taken from. Um, McCartney, well, I'm going to mention one later on in the successful category, but all of his latter days live albums I never go back to, including Tripping the Live Fantastic, including Paul is Live, Back in the US, uh, Live in New York City, just, you know, just pointless. I, I just don't need to hear live versions of his stuff uh, again and again and again, um, pun not intended. <laughs> um, so don't enjoy those. George Harrison live in Japan, again, don't ever get reach for that off the shelf. Don't ever feel the urge to listen to it. If they, if they put it out on DVD, I'd probably enjoy it. But uh, the performances are rather flat, in my opinion. John Lennon, New York City, the only time he's really done a proper concert, not ever been properly released on DVD on uh, CD or DVD in, in its entirety. Um, but it's it's just disappointing because on a track like Mother, he's playing the electric piano in the, with on the treble end. Same with Imagine, just missing those strong chords at the bass end of the piano, which were prevalent on the albums. Um, Plastic Ono Band and Imagine. Um, Innocent Karma's the same, just made into rather a light lightweight composition by the live performance. Uh, Elephant's memory are okay, but they're they're not uh, they're not magicians, and they can't rescue it really. Uh, Super Tramp. Now I'm into the OK category, which means I was kind of satisfied with the albums, but I still prefer the studio. And Super Tramp came up with a double album in 1980 called Paris, uh, documenting their '79 tour. And there was a new song called "You Started Laughing," which was quite interesting, but not much of a song. But Almost without exception, the live versions are not as good as the studio. Maybe some people disagree, and I think I was reading Roger Hodgson in one Supertramp book saying, for example, Soapbox Opera Live is excellent, and it, on the Crisis album it was ruined. <laughs> well, I don't, know, I don't know what he's talking about, because I think the Crisis, what Crisis version is brilliant. Um, he did also say that the, the reason given a little bit is not on the live albums. They couldn't find a good version of it from the tour, which I thought was quite interesting. Uh, also in the OK cash crew, we've got Pink Floyd The Wall from 1980 and 81 at Earl's Court, which I think visually might have been quite an impressive show to go to. But when you listen to the album, it's OK to listen to a couple of times, but one always prefers going back to the studio album. Uh, uh, by the way, I watched the film the other day. What a depressing film with Bob Geldof in the lead. What a depressing film. I don't think I'll be watching that for another 10, 20 years. Um, Here and There from Elton John. It's not a bad album, but it's obviously a truncated concert. And I think a recent issue has like, had extra tracks, more or less mirroring the, uh, the full concert. And Elton does a decent job in performing his songs live normally. And it's, it's pretty good. Um, ABBA Live at Wembley from 79. This was not an album back in the day, but it was recently released uh, on CD and on record. And they, they do pretty good versions. I mean, the, the band is tight. Uh, the, the band of Swedish musicians backing them up, same as on the record, I think. Um, and, you know, it's creditable, the fact that they can reproduce um, that sound on live. It's just, if you give me the choice, what am I going to look? reach for out of the album Arrival or 
live at Wembley, it's going to be the studio albums, or Vule Vua would reach for. Um, so now I'm into the pretty good category, and uh, Jarek Clapton, Just One Night, I picked this up in the early 80s, and I just played it to death. I just think it's a great band with Albert Lee on guitar, Henry Spinetti on drums, Dave Marquis on bass. This is live from Japan. The Last Waltz from the band, very good. Um, although I'm not a huge fan of the band's music, I do enjoy the uh, the cameos from Dylan and Clapton and um, and others, Van Morrison, and then Dire Straits. On a recent live box set, there's a superb concert from the Rainbow Theatre in 1979, and uh, just wonderful to hear basically the first two albums perform live impeccably before they got into their sort of stadium rock um, phase. Uh, they were pretty intimate. That Rainbow is quite an intimate venue. I've never been there, but I understand it's, you know, not more than a couple of thousand people. So um, that's great. Stones, their best live album by, by quite a distance, Get Your Yah Yahs Out. Um, I did actually write down um, Rolling Stone came up with a top 10 live albums of all time for what it's worth and I notice I'm not overlapping on one of them in my top seven. Uh, then number one was The Who live at Leeds, uh, The Allman Brothers live at Fillmore East, Peter Frampton, Frampton Comes Alive, Stones Get Your Yellow Yells Out, Kiss Alive, Deep Purple Made in Japan, Little Feet Waiting for Columbus, Nirvana, MTV Unplugged in New York, The Band, The Last Waltz, Bob Seger, Live Bullet. So that was Rolling Stone. Um, so now I'm into the don't know category. As I say, a lot of bands put out live albums in the 70s and I never, never bothered to check them out. So Genesis put out a double called Seconds Out. Peter Frampton, as I mentioned, comes alive. Um, Queen, Live Killers. Thin Lizzy, Live and Dangerous. Um, Led Zeppelin, the song remains the same. Just haven't checked them out. If anyone, any of you out there want to recommend some live albums to me, I'm quite happy to check them out because um, my collection is not comprehensive, obviously. Um, so now I'm going to come to the seven albums where I do think it works live and I'm going to go in, not really in any order, but I've put them in an order, so we'll stick with it. Um, Eric Clapton's Rainbow Concert from 1973, I think it was January. Um, this is the concert Pete Townsend persuaded him to come, come out of retirement for because he was in his heroin phase and uh, he was in bad shape and Pete was a mate and got together a pretty stellar band of musicians including Ron Wood himself, Pete Townsend and Eric on guitar, so three guitarists, Steve Winwood on organ and vocals, Rick Gretsch on bass. Jim Capaldi, Jimmy Carstein on drums, Rebop on percussion. So basically you've got most of Traffic backing um, Eric with the added guitar of Ron Wood and Pete Townsend. And it makes for a very powerful lineup. And the original album was only a single album. And then the recent CD is the, the full concert listing, I think. Although I was reading, actually, there's even more of an extended uh 25th anniversary version. I'm not sure if it's an official release or not, with even more stuff like nobody knows you when you're down and out and why does love got to be so sad which i don't think we're on the expanded cd so all in all i think that that is a concert i would have um loved to have been in the front row for um, i think george harrison said that you know he was uh, struck by eric's um versatility and just sheer presence in that concert i think him and ringo attended that that one um, number six from Lou Reed. I don't think this was a live album, only a DVD, and but it's on the kind of Lou Reed New York deluxe box set. There's a DVD of him performing the whole of the New York album, and he basically does it to perfection. He's got the same band, and uh, very powerfully done. And uh, I wouldn't say I prefer it to the studio version, but I probably do on balance because I can actually watch Lou perform it. <laughs> so. Um, but I think, you know, if we're talking just just um, audio wise, I think it's a, a match of, of the album. I think it truly captures the, the spirit live. Um, number five, we've got. Uh, so that was Lou Reed's New York album from 1990 done live. Number, number five, we've got Neil Young, Tonight's the Night. 
which didn't come out till 75, but basically documents uh, the tours that he was doing in September 73 at the Roxy Theatre in Los Angeles. And there's a live CD which came out not so long ago of those live concerts. And basically it's the whole of the Tonight Tonight album live, um, which hadn't come out at all. So completely new material, very brave thing to do. It does miss out Come On Baby, Let's Go Downtown, which is a big favourite of mine, which was on the album later. And actually as a live track sort of recorded several years earlier. And then an extra track, which was not on Tonight's The Night, which actually turned up on on the, on the beach is Walk On. But all in all, it's a superb performance. And uh, I just love the way, you know, as um, he said after when Harvest came out, see, I was heading towards the middle of the road and I decided to head for the ditch because it's more interesting there. So I think I just love the fact after Harvest, he didn't follow it up with Harvest 2. Well, he did come up with Harvest Moon 20 years later, but the, the immediate follow up was Time Fades Away on the beach and tonight's the night which are pretty pretty dark trilogy i think people call it the ditch trilogy neil young fans refer to it as that number four we've got bob dylan uh the rolling thunder tour from 75 captured on a four disc or four disc vinyl edition and i think multi-disc cd edition and this is just wonderful performances and not saying every track is better than the original. For example, Tangled Up in, Tangled Up in Blue, Hard to Beat the Blood on the Tracks version. But tracks like Hattie Carroll work really well live, Mr. Tambourine Man, Oh Sister, Hurricane, One More Cup of Coffee. Uh, tonight I'll be staying with you uh, from Nashville Skyline. And then from the 76 tour, which wasn't on that album I referred to, but turned up on the Hard Rain live album, Got superb live versions of Idiot Wind and Shelter from the Storm, particularly Shelter from the Storm. Um, so that was Bob. Number three, we've got ACDC and their live album from 1978 uh, on the back of Power Ridge, which was their current album at the time, but only Riff Raff from the album was performed on that tour, on that album anyway. Um, but highlights on the album, well, I didn't say any of them completely surpass the album versions, but but in one case, the Jack is certainly superior to the high voltage version. Hell Ain't A Bad Place To Be is more powerful live. Riff Raff is about on a par with the album version. Rock and Roll Damnation, uh, again, on a par with the studio version. Let There Be Rock, if anything, superior. Just a lot of energy on that live album. The only track I don't care for too much is, is Bad Boy Boogie, which I think is goes on a bit too long with the kind of extended bit at the end. But anyway, that was is fairly minor criticism. It's a tour de force live album from ACDC. Number two, we've got Simon and Garfunkel live in Central Park from 1982. It came out, but it was recorded in September 81. And the reason this I prefer to the studio versions is because Garfunkel is singing superb harmonies um, to back up Paul Simon on several of his solo songs, including American Tune, Kodachrome and late in the evening. Uh, so that's just wonderful. And then versions of April Come She Will are just completely delightful. It's a lovely version of Still Crazy. Um, I think the band that backed Paul and Arts on that concert is just absolutely brilliant. Steve Gadd on drums, Richard T on keyboards, Anthony Jackson on bass, Eric Gale on guitar, just more or less the band that played on One Trick Pony. Um, so I think yeah, that, that is a great live album, and in many cases better than the studio versions. And then we've got Wings Over America, the Wings album from live album from 76 from their tour of the States, uh, recorded in various venues. And I would say that not every track is better than the album version, but I would say, in my opinion, all of the Venus and Mars material is superior here, especially Letting Go and Magneto and Titanian Man, um, and the Spirits of Ancient Egypt, all three of those definitely, be and Rock Show. <laughs> the only track which may not be as good as the album version is Listen to What the Man Said, in my opinion, from that album. And then Beware My Love and Time to Hide from Speed of Sound, they knock it out of the park live, and the, whereas on the album they're a little bit pedestrian. And then maybe I'm amazed, as I've mentioned in other videos, superb version not live with Jimmy McCulloch playing the solo. 
and if anything, I prefer that to the, the, the 1970 version. So that was a few albums which I think the live versions live up to or exceed the studio versions. Um, sorry if your favourite's not on here or if you disagree. All entitled to our opinion. Happy to hear your favourites in the comments section. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.